Welcome back to A Tale of the Making of an Opera. My name is Barney Johnson, and in today's video I will be discussing an article I published on my website called Burning Scorching Drama, why I chose Atala as the source of my first opera. If you would like to consult the article directly, I will leave a link in the description below. Let's begin! Atala is a short story by Chateaubriand. Chateaubriand was a French author who lived at the end of the monarchy, into the revolution, and onwards to the end of the First Republic. He visited America multiple times. This was like in the early 1800s. And he had a deep fascination for the Native Americans. And he wrote about them and preserved them in his stories. And that is certainly the case in Atala. So Atala is a young woman about 17 or 18 from the Muscogee tribe, okay? And she falls in love with Shaktas. Shaktas is a young man about 1920 from the Natchez tribe. So there's two enemy tribes, so already we see the potential for an opera because it's forbidden love. And on top of that, one of them has to die. Of course, we gotta kill one of them. So that was Chateaubriand, that was not myself. And finally, there's a third person that comes into the scene a little bit after Midway Point, who is a mysterious man that I won't really allude much more to for the moment. Why did I choose Atella as the subject of my first opera? Well, when we get to the opera, what do we want? We want drama to the max, okay? There are a couple operas lower on the drama, but it still works, but there's exceptions, okay? We want maximum drama, okay? In Atella, first of all, we have death. Death is drama. Okay? Not only do we have death, we have the death of a lover. Ah! Oh, perfect! Perfect! Now listen, that's not me! That's the operatic audience, that's what they want, they love death! Okay? Let me just make sure my other friends are... Okay, perfect! Um, we have death, we have death of a loved one. Typically in operas, the death doesn't occur at the end of the opera. Okay? There are a couple where it could at the beginning and instigates a series of misfortunate events, but in general it's at the end. However, I have a very deep artistic challenge, and that's in this story. I need a, a prop for this, so I will get um, this stick, this one smaller. So I want you to imagine that this, this is the beginning here, this is the end of the story. What Chateaubriand does is he places the death in a little bit after the middle. Okay. Obviously, that's not going to work for an opera, but don't you worry, he's got us covered. Because what happens is, Atella is going to die. It's pretty obvious, the name of the opera is Atella, so obviously she's going to die. Plus, spoiler alerts are totally fine when it comes to opera, because we want the audience to enjoy the music, so we want them to know the story, so they're not all stressed out. Okay? So, Atella's going to die, but instead of just, poof, she's dead, she's on her deathbed. So the rest of the opera is going to be her on her deathbed. So I envision for my uh, version, it's going to be about 50 minutes, 45 minutes. So kind of like the first half of a concert or a show, and then the second half there could be another opera or something. So out of that 50 minutes, I'm going to reserve the last 20 minutes for the death scene, which does reflect kind of the intentions of the author, I believe, but I'll verify. Okay, now, why... Is it so juicy at the end? I'll tell you why. Because instead of just saying everything at once, Atella does a tell all. Yes, Atella is going to confess everything, but not right away. She's going to maximize the drama because she lets it squeak out bit by bit by bit by bit. So imagine this is the lowest possible drama. We're pretty much here. And then she's going to up the ante, up the ante, up the ante. And we'll get to a point where there is no more drama possible. But Chateaubriand found a way. And I will certainly make sure that translates into the, the music for the opera and finish. Why is Atella so tragic? I'll tell you. Chateaubriand uses what I call the Romeo and Juliet effect. Now what's the Romeo and Juliet effect? Okay, so, yes, uh, it's sad that they both died, but that's not why we cry our, 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 tear, our eyes out, okay, that's not why. The reason why we cry when we see Romeo and Juliet is because there were two lovers who, despite all odds, all the family up in there trying to stop the marriage, and there were a lot of, you know, conspirators, as the French would say, 
Despite all that, love was going to conquer everything. And they're going to be together forever, except there was just a little kerfuffle with their genius plan. And the same thing happens in Atella. And we discover on her deathbed, as she reveals the truth, and nothing but the truth, bit by bit by bit by bit, that at any moment, if some one thing could be slightly different, she would be able to live. If someone had entered the room a couple seconds earlier or later, temperature had been a little different. There hadn't been waves in the background, just kidding. Um, but every step of the way, there, she could have kept her life. And certainly, when I set this as an opera, I will be thinking about this. And one of the critical scenes now that I reveal to you is as she's revealing the truth, we finally get to the moment where everyone realizes that she's going to die. Because prior to this moment, everyone's trying to save her. They don't really understand. There's Shaktas, there's a mysterious man, there's Atella herself. Atella feels immense guilt, she feels horrible, so she's in torment. Shaktas is like, oh my god, what's happening to the love of my life? This mysterious man has his own little agenda in the corner. So everyone's focused on their personal suffering. But it gets to a point where there is no saving her. And they all reach acceptance. And my challenge, actually, as a composer in setting this opera is that I'm going to have to always hold a little bit back until this last final moment. Now, I don't want the audience feeling that. Every time they feel like the emotion of the orchestra and the swelling and the emotions of the characters, it needs to be feel full. But as the composer, as the artist, I'm thinking in advance, but I got to save a little bit for this last scene. Now, what's this last scene? Let me tell you, it's going to be, I'm going to, in my opera, it's going to be about three minutes, okay? Now, in the actual story, there's a lot more that happens. There's a funeral, but we got to cut it out, unfortunately, for the opera, okay? So, well, we do have the deathbed to work with, okay? Now, all the characters, they cease to flounder in their personal misery, their personal suffering. They accept that she's going to die, including Attila herself. And this acceptance by all three creates a union which brings us to the celestial. It's no longer an opera about individual suffer suffering. It's just about a poor tragedy. And we enter a celestial realm that we've never entered before in this opera, in this story. So for me as a composer, I'm envisioning this is the true angle. The audience thinks, oh, the angle is just the death. Ah, 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 no, no. It's this moment which I'm going to sustain for about three minutes of divine acceptance and beauty, which in the hands of a novice composer, it could go really badly. The audience might get bored because they're like, look, we want to see her die. But there's this new dimension that can be explored. And I actually already anticipate introducing a new instrument just for the end. Okay, I actually, I know an instrument I want to use, but I don't want to tell just yet. But I'm going to hold back on this instrument until finally this new celestial realm, because I want the audience to feel it. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my, I need that, oh my God. If the audience does not say, oh my God, pew, we got some problems. But that maybe it's my problem, who knows. I don't want them to literally say, oh my God, but I want them to feel what I felt when I read this story. On top of that, once we're in the celestial realm, Finally, yes, Atella is going to die. And after that point, I have very little time. The audience is going to get bored any second because they got what they wanted. But I gave it just a little bit more. And this is all based on the text. So Atella dies, and then Shaktas asks a question. Right after she dies, he's accepted she's dead. He sees her die. He asks a question. That question pushes the opera just a little bit further because it creates this, like, but it's over, but it creates this like, what, what, what? And then, Père Aubrey, the priest, oh shit, okay. I wasn't supposed to give away the mysterious man, but I, whatever, it's too late, it's an opera, whatever. Uh, Père Aubrey answers the question of Shaktas with conviction. And the opera, which was previously in the personal realm, now in the celestial realm, boom! Goes up to beyond, 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 beyond. Okay, once we get to the bottom, beyond, beyond, boom, opera finished, curtain goes down. Thunderous applause, we hope. 
let's discuss vision. I'm currently working on the libretto. So for those who don't know, the libretto is the script that is sung. Now, it's typically taken care of by a librettist, and they may or may not work with the composer beforehand, but there's two separate roles. In my particular case, for Atella, I can't wait, all right? I have other operas I want to write. For example, I have Le Bateau. I will put a link above, and you can check out previous videos I did on Le Bateau. It is based on my experiences as a foreigner in France, though I've said it in ancient Egypt. <laughs> and it also deals with homosexuality as, um, as a crime, okay? So that's a big opera. It's a full-length opera. I'm not going to be able to write that full-length opera if I haven't first done Atella. Okay, so I can get moving, moving, moving. And I intend to be finished with the libretto by the end of August 2023. By that point, we sincerely hope that we have garnered the interest and uh, piqued the interest, rather, of an opera company that would like to sponsor it. And then I can move ahead with the music. Finally, let's discuss my insecurities or my anxieties, okay? First and foremost, I'm concerned that this is going to be a lot of work that I just am not anticipating. I only say that because I just finished my orchestra piece, Hub is on the Way, in five movements. I will leave a link above so you can see all the work that went into that piece, okay? But basically, I finished it in 2017, then I tried to revise it. It took me five years to revise it, okay? I did not anticipate that, okay? Uh, with Atala, I'm going into it knowing that there's all kinds of things I don't know because it's my first opera. So hopefully uh, it will be manageable. Certainly, I think once the libretto is done and we've secured an opera company that's going to sponsor it and I have a salary coming through so I can write the music, I think we'll drastically lower that anxiety. So look forward to that. Another um, concern I have is being artistically loyal because this is not my story, it's Chateaubriand's story. And for me, the most important is, for example, if Chateaubriand had a ghost and the ghost were to attend the performance of Atala, I would want the ghost to think, wow, this is the story. Thank the Lord that my story, which was known to a small audience in France, is now brought to the entire world. And in fact, it's not just Chateaubriand that I feel a loyalty to, it's also Atella herself. Because every day I work on this opera, I feel that Atella is speaking to me, and she's saying, bring my story out to the whole world. I'm trapped in, trapped in this book. Bring my story to everyone. So that's really... Um, it has a hold on me, so I feel a sense of urgency because of that. In order to be artistically loyal, I will have to actually make cuts. For example, the funeral scene, everything after her death, I cannot keep for the opera. Um, I also have to modify dialogue because some of the dialogue that's present in the original text is just not singable. It will be very like ugly to sing. I don't think Chateaubriand was really a theater guy. He was more just a storyteller. Uh, unfortunately. Uh, there's also many scenes where there's beautiful descriptions that are critical scenes, but there's no dialogue. So in those cases, I will have to create dialogue. What I'll have to do is I'll have to imagine that I'm one of those characters, and what would I say, or rather sing, uh, in that moment. So I'm actually quite excited about that. If you find this project interesting, or if you have questions, if there's things you'd want to see in the creation of this opera, go ahead and leave some comments below. That would be very helpful. If you know someone that's uh, working in the operatic industry and would be interested in this kind of content, this kind of story, then you can direct them to the link for my article, Burning Scorching Drama, 